Hi everybody, it's time again for our Learn to Knit Socks live video series. We are working on Magic Loop and this is video number three. This is where we are going to be learning about turning the heel as well as picking up stitches for the gusset and how to do the gusset decreases. So I'm going to show you what part of the sock that is that we were talking about. So on this sock here, uh, on the last video, we knit the heel flap right here. It was the rectangular portion of the heel. And next, what we have to do is we have to change the angle that we are knitting. And that is the heel flap where it's, and people will call it turning the heel. It's essentially knitting this little wedge right here. And once we've done that, then we will pick up stitches along the edge of our heel flap. Um, and then we will start to knit in the round again and start decreasing out all of those extra stitches we just picked up. So I hope that everybody got their homework done. I hope everybody is ready to start because uh, this is a good one to do together. Um, this is probably the trickiest part of your sock. Starting is finicky uh, when you're casting on, but I think this is the trickiest part. Some people were saying that they thought that the heel flap would be a lot harder and it's really just, yeah, it's not that simple or not that difficult. Um, doing this part is a little bit more tricky and picking up the stitches, but that's why we're doing these videos. Together we can do it. So I have done all but one of my rows on the heel flap. I had 32 rows that I had just completed and I have 64 stitches. So this is half the number of my stitches. That's how many rows I'm doing. Um, and then I need to end by completing the first row again so that I finish um, ready to begin on a wrong side row. So I'm just going to finish this row, this last row, slipping one, knit one, slip one, knit one. Right, did everybody get along last time on their video? I saw a couple of pictures on Instagram of people that have done their heel flap and they're ready to go. Okay, so I just did row one again of our two row repeat for the heel flap, and now I'm ready to start on the, the heel turn. So what we are doing is we have, this is the back of the foot, essentially, but we need to start making our stitches turn, change direction. So we're going to do that kind of with a series of type of short row here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to count our stitches that are on this needle here, and we want to place a stitch marker in the center. So I've got some stitch markers here and a progress keeper, and these ones, the ones that I have here are going to be great because they will help me show you what we're going to be doing. We are going to be doing slip, slip, knit and knit two together and I will show you how we do that. We're going to be doing that um, when we pick up stitches here and start doing gusset decreases. I don't have any purl two together so we're not going to use that yet but first thing that we want to do is count our stitches. I have 32 and I need to count to 16 on here because that's halfway. Sixteen, right here. And I'm going to place a marker here. Now, I could do this on my last row. I could have just slipped a marker in here earlier. 
so that I didn't need to use this one that I add in later, but that's okay. That's pretty simple. So we need to do a setup rows, two setup rows to get started. So this is what we're going to be using. The first row is on the wrong side and we are going to slip one and I'm going to put this up to the side so that you can see it still as well as watch what I'm doing here. So I hope you have your knitting out so that you can do this with me. You're going to slip the first stitch, purl to the center, purl to the slip marker, or to this, <laughs> to the, the progress keeper or stitch marker, depending on what you've put in there. Okay, I'm to my center. I'm going to slip this marker and then we're going to purl two. So we purl two past center and then we're going to purl two together. Purl one then we will turn. Now you can do this for any number of stitches that you have. This formula is the same. This will give you kind of a wedge turn. Okay, I know there's a specific name for it, but I don't know what that name is. Okay, I'm gonna turn, and then the next row we're going to slip one, and we slip it as if to purl, so that the stitch stays seated the same direction on the needle. Then we're going to knit up to the marker and then we'll remove the marker. So the PM is place marker, RM is remove marker. We're going to knit two and then we're going to SSK. So if you don't know how to do that, I'm going to show you what that is. SSK is slip, slip, knit. We're going to slip the first stitch as if to knit. All the other times we've been slipping it as, as if we were going to purl so that it stays seated the same direction on our needle. This time we're going to do it the other way so it turns. We're going to slip one as if to knit. We're going to slip the next one as if to knit. Then we're going to slide it back on to the other needle, keeping this needle in the back and knit through the back loop, knitting both of them together as one. That is SSK, slip, slip, knit. Then we're going to knit one and turn our work. What this has done is it gives us a series of stitches that have been knit, creating more fabric while these stitches remain unknit. And you can see right here that I have a bit of a gap. And then over here where the needles are separated, I'll, I have another gap. And that's going to come in handy when we do the rest of this, the pattern so that recognizing where that gap is and, and seeing it, sometimes this will push together, but it's pretty easy to take, tell if you just pull this apart a little bit to tell where the gap is. So now that we've done this setup, we're going to move on to the rest of the rows, which is essentially the same as what we were doing before. We just didn't have to get to the center. We're already in the center here. So what we're going to do, let me get this up in the corner. We're going to slip the first stitch. We always slip the first stitch and we'll slip it as if to purl. And then we're going to purl across until we reach one before one stitch before the gap. Okay, there's one stitch before the gap here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to purl two together, purl one, and turn. We're going to purl the stitch before the gap, 
along with the one after the gap together. That's going to close that gap. We're going to purl that together and purl one more. Okay, we're going to turn our work. Let's do row two. The first one is slip one, knit to one stitch before the gap. So slip one and on this side we're going to be knitting. Okay, knit to one before the gap. So we've got our gap here. I need to knit these two together, but I'm not going to just do a knit two together because I want it to be a left leaning decrease. So I'm going to do SSK. I'm going to slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to knit, put it back on this needle, knit it through the back loop. Ah, I split my, my yarn. There we go. And then knit one and turn. Okay, so we're going to continue to follow this pattern. Now, if we look here, I'm going to try and hold this together so that you can see. I hope everybody can see this really well. It's hard to tell what you're able to see on the screen, but right here, we have knit kind of this little uh, half circle, not quite half circle, but little, uh, oh, I can't think of what that shape is but we've knit a little bit of extra fabric here and what it is doing is it's just changing the direction that we are knitting. So I'm going to continue on row one. This video will be a little bit longer because I need to complete this entire uh, series of stitches of rows here before we can show you how to pick up stitches for the gusset. So we're going to just try and get through this kind of quickly. Okay, there's the gap, purl two together, purl one, and turn. Slip the first stitch as if to knit, as if to purl. Now we're knitting across. Okay, is this making sense to everybody so far? Is this looking too confusing? Oh, SSK, sorry. S, S. Okay, Ugh, I keep splitting my yarn there. And knit one, and turn. Slip one, purl across. Okay, I'm to the gap, purl two together, purl one, turn, slip one. You can just start to get in a rhythm here, and it goes pretty quickly. I had somebody ask me if there was a pattern that we were following um, for this tutorial, and to be honest, there is one that we recommended but and now I have to do slip slip knit. But as we were really looking a little bit closer on it, um, we we aren't following it exactly. So I haven't seen one that's exactly this because this is such I don't know a, a basic sock that I don't, I'm sure that there's one out there that is written just like this, but. I'm not sure, so I will continue to look for a pattern that is written for a very basic vanilla sock like this. The pattern that we had recommended changes needle sizes and stitch counts and um, we just don't think that that's really necessary. Okay, I have two stitches, nope, three stitches on this side. Let's see. <laughs> I'm thinking I counted my stitches wrong when I began. One, two. No, I've got to finish this row and then it should be even. I haven't finished two. Oh, we've got Deborah Mason in. She's joining us later. You'll have to go back, Deborah, and watch the 
beginning where we showed you the setup rows and how to get started on this. Okay, now we're going to slip, slip, knit, knit one, and then we'd turn. What I wanted to show you is once you've finished both of these rows, then you should always have the same number of stitches after the gap on each side, which we do. We've got three, so we're almost done with this part. Oh, we've got Sue from Southeast Alabama. Hi, Sue. Okay, purl two together, purl one. Now we're almost to the part that can confuse people. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> I really like doing these live videos where we get some interaction um, immediately instead of having to do everything down in the comment section below. And Kim says hi from, and I don't know where, but hi, Kim. SSK, S, S, K, and this K always splits. Your tutorials are great. I thank you for doing them. I'm a very novice sock knitter. I'm retired and decided that maybe I have time to learn. Oh, that is so great. Oh, and Kim is from Felton, Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. I'm glad that these are helpful. Okay, we have one left on each side, which means that we can purl two together or do the SSK, but we won't have an extra stitch to knit at the end. That's okay. I'm going to show you what we're doing here. Okay, here we go. Here's one before the gap, and here's the one right after the gap. So I will purl those two together, but I will not be able to do the purl one. So we will just simply turn, slip, knit across, Okay, and then once again, we have the same thing where we have one before the gap and one left. So we will do the SSK and not knit one, and we will not be turning on this very last one. We're going to slip, slip, and knit. Okay, now look at the shape that we have here. That's the bottom of our heel. So by doing some short rows where we, short rows meaning we just knit across a portion. Oh, Sue from North Alabama says hi. Hi, Sue. So we're just knitting across a portion of our needles, uh, across our stitches, and leaving the, the rest unworked until we, till we get to that point. And that uh, creates the change in direction because what it's done essentially is it has created extra fabric here while removing some of the other stitches. We should have, I believe, 18 stitches on here if you start with a 64 stitch sock. Eighteen. Southeast Alabama in Enterprise, Sue says. She lives in Southeast Alabama. We have people all over the place joining us. Thank you. Okay, so it is time now. I had 18 stitches here. So if you have a 64 stitch sock, 
then when you're done, you should have 18 stitches. If you have a 68 stitch sock, you would have 20 stitches. If you have a 72 stitch sock, you would have 22 stitches. So for every four stitches that your cast on goes up, this number will increase by two stitches, okay? All right, so we are going to now pick up stitches along the edge here. This is the part that can get a little bit tricky. So I showed you in our previous video that by slipping the first stitch of every row, we end up with kind of these larger chains, it looks like, these stitches. That's where we're gonna be picking up our stitches. Now, some people pick up just one stitch. Um, most pick up two. I'm going to be picking up two stitches. But what we have to do is readjust our needles, and this is the part that I think um, confuses people when they're doing magic loop. So if I have 18 stitches on this needle, I'm going to divide it in half. Once again, I'm going to count. I, I pulled my needle through. Sue says you live in a beautiful area. Which Sue? Which area? I'm, I'm focusing on my sock here. I missed the comments. And then I'm sad. <laughs> okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine stitches. I pulled this needle out, so I'm working on just the cable here. And I'm going to pull this cable through by just bending it and pull through a little bit here. What I am doing is I am now changing my needles so that instead of knitting with my needles going this direction, they're actually gonna be changing to this direction. So you'll see how we do that in just a minute. But that makes it easier for picking up stitches. Okay, we want to pick up the same number of stitches on both sides of our heel flap, or of our, yes, of our heel flap. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just kind of get this out of the way here. Um, I know that I have 16 stitches. Oh, both, both Sue's are talking to each other on here. We have two Sue's that are talking to each other. Okay. Oh wait, I have a question. If you are watching this live, can you see the comments pop up? Would you, would you share a comment here and let me know if you can see other people's comments? Yes, oh, that's good. When I was watching it before, I couldn't see the other comments. And so it was getting very confusing. Okay. I'm going to start picking up stitches. I have 16 along here. I'm going to pick up 16 stitches plus one. I'm going to pick up one right here to help close the gap, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to look closely at this, the side here, and it rolls in, so I try to pull it up, and I'm going to hold my yarn. Depending on how you like to tension it, you could do it in either hand. It might actually be easier for me to do it here. Let's see. I'm trying to look at it through the screen, so we'll see what's easiest. We're going to start in this chain right here. Can you see that? We're gonna put our needle in through both of those loops. Nope, I need it in my other hand. I'm gonna wrap it around and pull it through. So I just picked up one, two, three. Can you see where we're picking those up? Trying to do it really slow so that you can see. Four. Oh, Kim, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad that this is making it easy to see. Now I forgot where I was. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, four. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Five. I have to keep twisting this back so that I can see these stitches. Going through two loops, six, seven. You know what? I might show you on the other side another way that you can pick these up. 
seven. Uh, I gotta readjust here. Ten. Okay, I just picked up 16 along the side. On the inside, you will have kind of these little chains along the flap there. So we picked up 16 stitches, plus we have the nine stitches from our heel flap, or from our heel turn. And now, if I were to just start knitting across right here and just join that together, we would end up with a little bit of a hole sometimes. And that's something that really irritates a lot of people. So I'm going to show you. A lot of people will just pick up a couple stitches in here. But I was watching uh, Mina Phillip. She is the knitting expat. She has a tutorial where she shows one way that she closes up this gap, which was a really great tutorial. So I will show you um, as well here, but I would suggest going and watching her video as well. So on the needle, if you look at it here, you have the stitch that's on the needle, you have another one right below, and then you have one right below, which is tighter. We want to go in to that one, that is the third one down. We have one, two, three, and grab one of those stitches. And then we wanna do kind of the same thing on the other side. Um, you can do the one on the needle, go down one and down one more, pick up one of those. But I can see if I do that, that's going to be kind of loose there. I'm going to actually pick up, nope, I'm going to pick up this one. I'm going to put it on my left needle, both of these, and I'm going to knit the two together. And that will close that gap up. Now I need a stitch marker. I'm going to use this one because this one says knit two together. That's what I will be doing on this side. Now I'm going to knit half of my stitches on this front needle, which will be 16 stitches. One, two, because we're back to working in the round. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is kind of fiddly here right now, I'm just telling you. Judy says, hello from Montreal. Fun. What time is it there? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, I worked half of the stitches. So what I want to do now is I want to pull my back needle. I'm, I'm turning this now where the needle that I was just knitting with, I'm gonna turn it around. That's gonna become my back needle. I'm going to pull this one out, not completely because I don't wanna lose this loop. Okay, what I can do is I can readjust. It's 9.30 p.m., Judy says, in Montreal. Okay, so we've got some bedtime knitting, hopefully, here. Now I'm going to knit across the other half of my, oh, I just lost my needle. Okay, I'm gonna knit across the front half, second half of the stitches. My daughter says, should we eat without you? Yes, you should eat without me. <laughs> they came home from a play rehearsal while I was at the beginning of this video. I made soup, and it's sitting in there waiting for me. Okay. So we've knit across those stitches. Now we have to pick up the same number of stitches on this side. So... We're going to, what I want to do is I want to count how many slip stitches I have on this side. Because I worked one extra row 
going back the other direction, sometimes you'll go and count these and you don't get quite the same number of stitches. So if I start right down here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and I don't want to pick up in this loose one, so we're good there. Sixteen. So I need to pick up one stitch to close this gap, which is where this other needle comes in handy. I will do the same thing as I did before. I will pick up not the one on the needle, not the one below, but the one down here, as well as one across from it. I'm going to come over here, I'm trying to do this through the camera. There we go. And this one, I'm going to knit two together. Oh, you know what? I don't want to do that yet. I want to put my stitch marker on. This one says SSK. Now we can knit those two together. Okay, so there's my first stitch. I need to pick up 16 along here. We're going to just do the same thing as we did before. Now I forgot where I started counting earlier. I started counting right here. This is where you can kind of, you know, just make it work. Like if you have too many on here and you're picking up, you know, 20 stitches, that's a really big heel flap. So you can skip a couple of these and not pick up quite as many. So I just picked up one, two, three, four, five, I split, split a stitch there. Five, six, seven, eight, Eleven, twelve. Let's get some more yarn here. Thirteen, fourteen, There we go, 15 and 16. So I picked up 16 stitches there as well as the one where that we picked up to close the gap. And now I can just knit across the last nine on this needle. And we have turned the heel, picked up stitches, and we are ready for the gusset decreases. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. And now we've changed, like I said before, from knitting in the round this direction to now we are knitting in the round this direction. You can do it with it still remaining on your needles this direction. You will just have a lot of extra stitches on the back, on the heel flap which stretches and pulls out between the two needles and you can get laddering and stretch stitches. So I don't like to do that. Um, my sister Emily, she does hers differently, but she's not doing the magic loop so tutorials. So I get to show you how I do it. <laughs> okay. Now, one thing that I like to do, it's, it's pretty obvious. This is the heel, this is the back of the foot, but I like to put a stitch marker at the beginning of round because if I just get going and I'm not really paying close attention, I stop paying attention to, is this the beginning of the round or was this the beginning of the round? Um, and this just has something visually to help me remember. So what we're going to do for our decreases, what we want to create this wedge. We're, we're going to be decreasing stitches so that 
right here we have more on there that we just picked up and it creates a wider expanse of stitches here but we need it to get more narrow back here for the foot where it's smaller so every other row we're going to decrease so we just picked up and knit the first row so I'm going to show you the decrease has everyone been able to follow this so far going to knit up until three stitches before my marker. Sue says yes, she's been able to follow it, and Kim, good. You're welcome. I'm glad that, that you ladies are here. I hope that everybody is successful in knitting their socks. Okay, we are almost there. We just need three stitches before our marker. We have one, two, three, four. Okay, three stitches before the marker. We are going to do on this side, on the first needle. Oh, thanks, Judy. I'm glad that I'm explaining this clearly. Okay, we are going to knit two together. Knitting two together creates a right-leaning decrease where your needles will have a visible right slant. Then we're going to knit one. We're going to slip our marker, knit across this needle. For the rest of the stitches on this needle, nothing special, just knit. Then we are going to turn our work, readjust my needle here, I'm going to knit across up until our stitch marker here. Okay, and then we are going to, as my stitch marker says, we're going to slip the stitch marker and we are going to SSK. So we're going to slip, oh, actually we're not doing that yet, sorry, the first stitch I knit. So if you look at the top here, these are the stitches that we are working on the heel and we're decreasing these stitches right here. So right before the stitch marker here and right after this stitch marker, you're going to knit. You're going to knit the last stitch here. You're going to knit the first stitch here. So I just knit that first stitch and now we're going to SSK. S, S, K. Then we're going to just knit, knit around. So we just did a decrease row. Once we get to the edge of, end of this needle, which is the back of our heel, which means that the next row will simply be a knit row where we don't do any decreases or anything fancy. Now, if you have a lot of stitches that you've picked up, you may want to decrease every row. Okay, so We just turn it, go around, knit one row, and then I want to do that and then do a decrease row to show you one more time. Um, while I'm knitting around here, this is a good time. If you have any questions that I have not addressed already, this is a good time to ask those.
one thing I like doing in videos. Oh, someone was asking is what size is my loop? Good question. So the needles that I'm using are um, Chiagu Red Lace. They're 2.25 millimeter and it is a 32 inch cable. That's my favorite size cable. I don't, see I just slip this over, the stitch marker over and keep knitting. I don't knit two at a time. And so if you knit two at a time, you could use a 40 inch cable so that you have room to get two socks on your cables at once. But that's not what we're showing here. Um, you've been changing over to DPNs to, for picking up, Sue says. So it was helpful to see how I change the needles around. Okay, I'm gonna knit one more side and then I'm gonna show you the decrease round one more time. I was like watching on videos how people knit because everybody holds their needles and their yarn differently. They manage everything differently and it's so fascinating for me to watch. There's not a right way, there's not a wrong way, there's just what works for you. I slip my stitch marker, knit across. I didn't mention when you do an SSK, it creates a left leaning decrease. And I'll show you why we do those two in just a moment after we go around this. All right. I'll need to finish up soon because I know my battery is going to die soon and I'm sure all of you ladies have had just about enough of this for one night. <laughs> okay, so on our sock, the side, I'm going to turn it the direction that we're working here. So we have a knit two together and the knit two together creates a line going this direction. When we flip it over like this and we do SSK, it creates a line that goes the opposite direction. One thing that you will notice is SSK is often a little bit more sloppy. Um, I wanna show you one way that I like to do an SSK. I'm kind of fumbling with mine because I haven't done an SSK the way I'm showing you for almost since I began knitting. I saw a video after I had knit my first or second pair of socks and I didn't like how the stitches were laying and I wanted to find a way to neaten that up. So I found a tutorial and I wish I could remember what it was called, or where I found it, but it was just simply called A Neater Way to SSK. And there are several different ways to do, you know, different variations on it. But I'll show you what I do. Okay, so I'm going to knit this is a decrease round. I'm going to knit until I get to three stitches before the marker. So here's my marker. I have one, two, three, and right here, we're on our first needle, so this is knit two together. I think I said earlier that a SSK creates a left-leaning decrease. That's not true. If I said that, I was I don't know what I was thinking. A knit two together creates a left leaning decrease and an SSK creates a right leaning decrease. Okay, I'm gonna knit that last stitch, like I said, before the marker, slip this over, finish these needle, this needle, and then I'm going to show you how I like to SSK. Okay, we're gonna turn. This is one thing that some people don't like about Magic Loop is the readjusting your needles all of the time. That doesn't bother me at all. I feel like I have to mess with DPNs the same amount. So I, I kind of like both for different reasons.
We're going to knit up and to the up to the marker. This is our second side, our second needle. So we knit up to the marker. I'm slipping it over. Then we're going to knit one. And now this is how I SSK. I'm only going to be showing this one time on here because we need to end. I go in through the front needle and then through the back of the second stitch. I wrap my yarn and I come out the way I went in. Then I slide the first stitch off, kind of tug, slide the second one off. And that just pulls in all of that extra ease from the stitch and then we don't end up with a big loop or a weird bump. I, let's see if I can actually undo this show one more time. Okay, I'm going to go in through the first stitch in the front. Um, Sue was asking where I got these markers. They were actually from a friend. I don't know where they came from, where she got them from, so I can't really tell you. Okay, let me show you. In through this front stitch, and then in the back on the second stitch, wrap your, your yarn around and come out the way that you went in. First loop comes off the needle, give this a little tug, second loop comes off, and we're done. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what our stitches look like now. You can see that we're getting a line of decreases here. We've kind of got a wedge happening here. And we're just gonna continue that around until we have our original number of stitches on our needle, which for me would be 32 stitches on each side. Um, once we've finished that, we need to readjust our needles again. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Once we have all of our stitches, you know, back to our original stitch count, so I would have 64 stitches total, 32 on each side. I'm going to readjust my needles so that I'm back to working this way. Okay, and I kind of do that as I knit. Oh, I've got to get this back in place here. But what I can do is I can pull out my cable where I have my stitch marker. And I would actually remove this stitch marker once I get to that. I'm not going to because I'm not finished here and I don't want to lose where I'm working, but I'm going to bend my cable, pull this through. Okay, so I've got some stitches here. This is kind of confusing here, but I want to have the front of my sock right here on one needle and the rest on my back needle. Okay, so I'm going to get my get a little bit more slack here, a little bit of slack here, and I'm going to pull my cable right here between the stitch markers. Now I can kind of get rid of that loop here. And I am back to, once I finish knitting across here, I am back to having them on front and back. Let me get across here so I can show you. I've kind of got my stitch markers hanging out here because I don't want to take those off right now. So they're going to dangle and make some noise. When I'm done, I will just readjust my stitches back how I had them, but I wanted you to see how to do this. So I'm doing my knit two together, knit one. Okay, so I would then have my stitches readjusted back to two needles going the other direction where I have the front of my sock and the back of my sock. And I would just keep knitting and knitting and knitting the foot. Okay, I'm gonna show you because I, we were going to talk about this in the next, next video, but that doesn't actually make too much sense since you need to have that done. You need to know how, to knit, how long to knit your foot. So let's get out our measurements from the very beginning. My foot, oh, I'm gonna take this off, the sock blocker so I can show you. I'm readjusting here so that you can see just the bottom of my sock. 
Okay, you can do this by rows. Um, I usually measure. But we have my foot measurement. The foot length is nine and three quarter inches, and the toe length is one and a half. We want to stop knitting one half inch before our toe because we want a negative ease. We talked about that before. And depending on how much negative ease you like, you can do um, one half inch or three quarters inch or even one inch. It really just depends on your preference, but one half inch is pretty, pretty average. Um, so if I have nine and three quarter inches and I subtract one and a half inches, that gives me eight and a quarter. Then I'm going to subtract half inch again, which gives me seven and three quarter inches that I want to knit from the heel, from the heel down before I get ready to do my toe. Did that make sense, ladies? Hope that made sense. So that's why you need these measurements here. So you're going to make sure you have some negative ease so that your socks will stay put on your foot in your shoes and they will last longer. Um, Sue and Kim say yes. Judy says, I finally, uh, finally I understand. What is it that you understand? You understand the negative ease or how to do this? Because it can sometimes seem uh, confusing, like just make a wild guess as to how long and hope that it's right. But there is kind of a formula for doing that. So your homework? Now, before our next video, is you need to finish your gusset decreases and knit the foot up to the toe, up to that half inch before the toe. Okay, so you actually have you have a little bit more time since that's a good amount of knitting. If you have big feet like I have, it's going to take a little bit more time to knit that much. And then the next video that we are doing for the DPNs or no for Magic Loop is on March 10th at 7 p.m we're going to knit the toe. Um, the toe is pretty simple, so there's no need to fear. Judy says, I understand how to measure my foot and where to start my toe. Great, that is fantastic. I'm really glad because, you know, we don't need to have any guesswork in here. It's pretty, pretty simple to knit a sock and this should be enjoyable and fun to do. All right, thanks ladies and hopefully some gentlemen. I don't know who's joining exactly, but I'm just happy to have anybody knitting socks. We will talk again soon on March 10th. You can leave comments down below um, if you have any future questions. And I would also love if you um, take pictures. Oh, Lori's here. Hi, Lori. Um, if you take pictures of your sock at your progress and um, post it on social media with the hashtag MyFirstSocksCal. I would love, and you can tag me in it. I would just love to see your work and your progress and just to cheer you on. And you can go into our Ravelry group in, uh, under the groups tab, Meanwhile at the Castle, and share pictures there as well. All right, have a good evening, ladies.